This is BTW RLM 339. I've had a complete change of heart, folks. I've seen the light. We're not going to be here much longer because of the climate crisis, folks. We have only have a few months left. I'd love to support that Green New Deal, folks. I'd love to support AOC. Green jobs. But getting rid of fossil fuels is not going to solve the problem fast enough, folks. I think we need to promote the next campaign. We need to get ahead of this curve. You people are pollution. Stopping making babies is not enough, folks. We need to eat the babies. And I got the t-shirt to prove it. But better than me, let's hear it from someone who actually presents this in the most brilliant way and looks ahead of the future and actually calls it out. On something we have to getting rid of fossil fuel is not going to solve the problem fast enough. So I think your next uh, campaign slogan has to be this: We got to start eating babies. We don't have enough time. There's too much CO2. All of you, you're you you know you're a pollutant. Too much CO2. We have to start now, please. You are so great. I'm so happy that you really support a new green deal, but. It's not enough, you know, even if we would bomb Russia, we still have too many people, too much pollution. So we have to get rid of the babies. That's a big problem. Just stopping having babies is not enough. We need to eat the babies. And this is very serious. Please give a response. Okay, thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. We'll go ahead. I think we all need to 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 understand that there are a lot of solutions that we have. Um, and that we can pursue, and that if we act in a positive way, there's space for hope. That's right, folks. Hopium. Space for hope. Hopium. Hopium and change. Eat the babies, folks. What's the solutions now? This is brilliant. This, this uh, response was brilliant on so many levels. Of actually, it's not, so, it's, it's not funny, folks. I've been cracking up for a few days now. Brilliant. I don't know if I hope you appreciate how brilliant this move was. It probably won't be perceived as such. But this has really kind of caught my mind about really what has what's going on, how you call part of this out. Some of you can pull this off. And we find out, and I was sad to hear, that they let it be known. This was a setup. Someone went into a meeting uh, of the pre, pre-chicken hatchling escapee and explained what the actual intention of this whole thing is that they call the climate crisis. And if you don't understand that, you, you either haven't listened behind the woodshed well enough and you need to hear more, or you aren't studying enough and you're not reading the documents. And so th- this touches on so many points. Eat the babies, folks. That's the we, People were talking about, a lot of memes came out about it, but you know we've heard the innuendo of this. So- Soylent Green was an indication uh, that all y'all are pollutants and they want to get rid of you. But you see AOC backing off. She doesn't understand it. So if you embrace this thing to the ultimate end, uh, it would be an embarrassment. And she tried to, all she could do is, you're going to have hopium, folks. It's all you have to live on. You'll be addicted to hopium. That's all she had to offer. Why? Because the solutions, what are we talking about? The solutions network. All right? This is all tied to, listen to the words. You can hear exactly what's going on. That extreme is where they want to go, and they want, don't, they're want they not really prepared to tell you that. And uh, they don't uh, want to ha- show you how when, what you'll be doing is eventually you'll be doing that on your own. It sounds bizarre, I know, but I'm not, not here to uh, sensationalize more than I can find in the writings themselves, if you would just read them. And so then I turned that into looking into the United States of America and saying, there's a method of destruction going on. And I don't care what name you put on it. You can put all kinds of names on it. It's an ism. It ends up being a religion. You end up, religions are underlying lots of things that are adulterations to what you know moral men and women should be doing. I don't know about any book or belief. You just have to, I guess I could say, live honorably. And that gets all contorted underneath these political economic systems, politi- religio-political systems. And I've been, I've talked to you about over and over, the years over and over, tying together things. I guess I'll say it here so we go, don't miss the point. 
Uh, remember, we talked about the Pope integrating with sustainable development. And I, su I suggested to you why and how they were, a, it's a part of this overall thing. And so you see many integrations moving into this uh, global construct, which has no, it's all authority, it has no authority. And how do I, and I, and I want to point out again, how do I understand it objectively, not my subjective obsession. Objectively, we look at the United States and it has certain things called these laws relative to land and protecting it. That it's not being protected today it shows you how far down the hole, the, the sink into the stinking abyss we are. They don't want you to have property. Because when you have property, especially in the United States, you have to have protections. We're hearing that it's there still. It's not done yet. That's why I say, I don't think we're quite conquered as a people, as many people would say. We're not quite taken over. Uh, but I also don't look out there to try and solve things in here, if you will. Um, and I'm in a communication, slight communication on the Twitter about this. Uh, I'm not interested in focusing on any ism, any place when uh, we, it may not be coming from there, even though it looks like it could be. Because these are all these things we talk about. These solutions come through religio-economic constructs of control, can come by any name, any ism, any ist. They can come from any place. And they're all focusing on you, ultimately, and in a place where you can protect yourself. That's why America is great, is because you're the last potential restriction. And I've come 10 years now broadcasting to try and explain a lot of that to you. So what, what is she talking about, these solutions? Eat the babies, folks. That's <laughs> not funny. I've been laughing for a week, folks. <laughs> I've been laughing so much uh, on this. It's not funny. They did a brilliant thing there. They made the statement, you are pollution. And this is the whole thing about how this works. Why do they do that? Because the weapon they've been using, this thing called climate change, relies on the stupidity that carbon is going to be a pollutant. And then they conflated, if I can use the term, conflated this idea into pollution. And they confused it for people. And it's neither the same thing, and it's not science. So the solution that the hopium agent has to give you, hope and change, just like the Obamaite, and ultimately you get it on the GOP side and the Democrats, as I told you in 2013, our, our in, uh, injunction. They agreed, folks, that they, they're going to implement this. It just depends on how, how easy they can slip slip it by you. This is the most extreme example of where this goes. For as astounding as that sounds, eat the babies is an actual part of it. But see, it came out too quick. And this is another way I've been telling you how you out it. You got to show the end game for as, as insane as it sounds. And and they and she presented that brilliantly, brilliantly. Now I I did have to look at it the second time. There was some clues until we found out that there was a that was a presentation a setup. There were some clues that that was a setup. She does have some mannerisms that are not consistent with her discussion if she was a uh, manic uh, obsessive about this. But, and so I had to look at it the second time. But coming out to tell you that they, you are the pollutant is really all you need to know. In, in the solutions that the pre-chicken hatchling says is, the escapee is saying is going to come down the, down the pike. Now, what is maybe missed here, uh, if I can do, and I don't want to do too much of an analysis because it's brilliant on its own, but I do want to point out a couple of things and move through. We're looking at an economic construct, however you title it, by from wherever. And it's a controlled construct from wherever it gets ruled. And they're going to, and we've talked about all the interlocking issues with the data, technocracy, the communications, the, well, the digital applications of all this. We talked, it's all integrated in its part that she was anticipating a future. And so that got me thinking, okay, how can I use this, this brilliant application of outing this condition and showing that they're flat-footed, they don't have a response to the truth of this, however insane it sounds. When you extrapolate out the plan, this is what they're talking about. People are pollution. You will be cleaned up. And they're going to do it by a number of ways. What better way than to stop you from even existing or only exist underneath the centralized plan? For what? For the good of the state, which is what human rights is, if you go look closely, for those of you that want to really read about how this works. Again, I'm just talking, not an opinion, folks. I've read all the words. I don't even know now where I found most of this stuff. It all just comes together to explain to you things, and if anybody had any one particular question, I'll, I'll eventually track it back down if it may take five minutes. 
about okay, where's the source for that? It's all out there. Let me give you give one uh, one thing that's been in the in the news in their own archives. These people. What are the solutions uh, against something? But before we get to the solutions, what is it that they're talking about? The uh, presenter, Eat Babies, is is anticipating a future. We don't have long. They're she's a, r- mimicking what they're claiming. What AOC. Ocasio said herself, we only can live for 12 years. She accelerated the timeline to, we don't have much, but months maybe. Why? Because that is speaking to you that someone has is claiming the power of prediction over something that is not really predictable on our level, I guess. I mean, I guess it may be at some point, but we're not, we don't have this insight. Let me point out to you the, the solution. Remember, the solutions network. The, what you might understand is the Hegelian dialectic to pull in what you might think is socialism or com- communism or whatever. It's in the documentation that you want to listen for the subtleties. I'm going to read from a document. I can't remember now. Darn it, just slipped my mind how old this is. This might be out of the 90s at some point. It's been represented, but it's been presented as a 2018 thing. This thing has been around forever. Through the UN itself, the working groups, remember working groups I've told you are part of this consensus networking destruction method that you can destroy immediately by entering in in a non-partnership, uh, if you will, a non-teamwork area, a non-collaborator. Uh, Spies and collaborators, folks, this is what we're talking about. Uh, uh, the uh, cooperating agency, you don't work uh, in that capacity at all. You figure out, like we did for Jefferson Mining District, to become a, to coordinate in the law relative to the imposition of these solutions that they run through alternative dispute resolution. What was the solution? We got more solutions than eating babies, she said. What are they? Well, it presumes prediction. Let me go read from the own documents that uh, I don't even think the pre-chicken hatchling Ocasio, escapee Ocasio, even knows this stuff. I mean, I don't think she was alive when this stuff is written. It's just before her, I think. If not, she was a little girl. Uh, but here, right, executive summary of the working group of the so-called scientific basis. If you think I, I'm just talking opinion here, no, they tell us everything we need to know. We can denounce everything they do just on their own words if we were just to do it. They come as a color of authority. I tell you, that everything they, these people do is a felony to start with. It becomes a treason where they start to move against the laws of the United States, something which most people will den- denigrate. And I'm talking particular to land law here and disposals and obligations and grants and all kinds of high-powered law that are sitting there that nobody, not even the judge, can, can interpret. So, no, we don't go to the legal system. No, we don't go to the courts. The courts, I've told you and explain how this works, the courts are inert to this condition. Now, how do you get to make actual lawful judgment against you is an interesting question. I'd like to hear who that would be. Let me just read here quickly. The working group. Executive summary. First sentence. Further work is required to improve the ability to detect, attribute, and understand climate change, to reduce uncertainties, and to project future climate changes. Right? Project future climate changes. This is in their scientific basis. They're going to project. Now, what's their admission? is down farther down deeply into the document a little bit. You just got to keep reading. You'll find this stuff, folks. If, if, you, if I didn't have me to, to show you, it's here. I, I, I guess frustrated here. This, you go by a few sentences enough to destroy this. Why this becomes something that people don't want to hear or think they can have an answer around better by their opinions and their determinations and their redefining of structures that don't exist, their euphemisms and euf- whatever, talking about what they think is going on is beyond me. We don't have to do that. And when we are successful, I find that the method we use is direct to the words that are being used and pulling them out in such a way to show in fact, there is no authority for who's doing what they're doing and against what they're doing it for. It's right in the code. And this is why I tell you that it's nothing a secret. Everything is out in the open. They're taking you down while you watch. It's transparent to you. It's actually not transparent to you. For some reason, you've shut your brain down. I don't know what that is. And I'm not saying I was immune to that before. Some things have happened to me and made me question that. I stopped, I stopped being uh, accepting uh, that maybe the world was in such a kumbaya place because it's not. Uh, to my dis- dismay at some level. I'm not wired that way. I would like to see the kumbaya place. But let, let's go down inside. You understand that now they want to improve uncertainties in their science, folks. They don't even have this thing. I told you this a long time ago. Let's go read this one sentence. And I'll go on to a second. But the first one, listen to this carefully. This is this 
climate change solutions, eat the babies thing that is, you know, it turns out you want to laugh at it. I mean, but it's not funny, folks. This is a real thing coming down. This expose, this statement exposes the ultimate end of these insane psychopathic types that are in seats of decision. That you, It was your republic if you wanted to keep it, and you didn't, and this is where we are today. We hear these insanities. We Luckily, yet, we still hear them as an expose through a comedic form, which I wish I could do a whole lot more. Uh, only because it seems the breads and circuses is what people actually want to listen to and respond to. Uh, even so, they respond to it in different ways, but they still respond. Uh, here, they, you, they listen and then you go away. It doesn't, it doesn't fit your little mold of what you think you want to see in the world. Here, the climate system. Now, we're not talking the climate change. This is a climate system. Right there we have a problem. I've told you, you can't model that. But let me read their statement. They'll, they'll tell you this. Again, I knew it from my studies, my upbringing, my science, all this other stuff. It couldn't be. I also then learned it by the methodologies that they were doing. And then in 2013, we concisely stated it and moved the lawsuit. Now, here's what they've been trying to impose upon you, something that's already in their documents. Something that they said is pre that they are trying to predict the future. Twelve years, a few months, it doesn't matter. What they said in the document up front is that their science projects climate change. What they actually admit is that the climate system is, cu is a coupled, nonlinear, chaotic system, and therefore the long-term prediction, prediction, say it again, prediction of future climate states is not possible. They're not in the prediction business because they can't. What they are is in the projection. Breads and circuses, theater, they're in the projection business of climate change. And let me now integrate something else that may pass by a lot of people. The climate change they're talking about is your political climate. They're changing that. They said climate states. The condition of the political climate is what they're actually going after. Why? Because they do things smart, and smart means something. S-M-A-R-T. It's a method. They can tell you, I've told you this, about how this applies. What's the solution Rather than eating babies, would be to be thing, bring things smart into your life that are based on projection, not prediction. And you think it's science. And yet I've told you in the past, over and over, there is no science. Their science is really a statement that they can't actually predict the future. They're going to project the future. But the, I'm telling you underneath the words, if you have the magic decoder ring on how to read what it means, Climate states is your political climates. It's your economic climates. It's your life climate, the environment, the condition of your life in the aggregate. Okay, so the, you can read right through. You can read. I always read two documents. When I read these people's work, it's two documents. I'm reading what they're telling you, and I'm reading what they're telling themselves. What, these are like documents for their. They have the decoder ring terminology. And when I, that came, when that was a real an awareness for me, I, I could see. Again, I started to see the transparent folks. I started to see dead people. I mean, I started to see things that people don't really pick up. And it, in some regard, it, it's, it becomes, for me, just a body of information that isn't the information actually on the front end that you're going to use. You just know, I am certain, I am in conviction they don't have science. I am in conviction they have already admitted. I am in conviction they're not dealing with, a, with the climate at all. Well, the word climate has a funny any uh, number of meanings. They are dealing with the climate. It doesn't have to do with the weather, though. That's why they don't have to look at the sun, because they're not dealing with anything. But let me look more particularly. This ultimately comes down to what? And I go, the clues are given to us if we were just attached and just to build this beast that they're, they've got going and how they're getting it together. The solution is to bring on something. Climate change, your political climate, your economic climate will be changing if you allow it. We have one of the, if I can say, keys to not allowing that. And that's why I say work locally, because you have control of that. We can't go international at this point. We may not even be able to go international federal in the United States of America. But every people everywhere can do this wherever their political structure is, because they're trying to undermine even that everywhere for this new 
this new assemblage, <laughs> read the assemblage word, assemble simulations using complex models, is what they're stating they're going to do. Remember I talked about the complex models. Now that's, that's in one regard, that's the, the confetti in your face, of the, bat, the, the dazzle, bedazzle, the, the, the fireworks. What they're talking about is using complex models that have integrated all this smart information they're getting, uh, the information from all these devices, from your 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 lack of response. I've told you that's the most serious one, actually. Uh, then your uh, silent response, uh, consent, which is just accepting a lot of this stuff by buying the new technology, which gives them all the data they need to configure the special algorithms to find out how they're going to move you from where you think you they think you can, or what you actually state you are to where they need you to be, and, and that's where they start knowing you better than you. Why you don't want integrated databases? But anyway, let's get back to the point. The climate system. Now, speaking in the real Earth weather, the climate system is a coupled nonlinear chaotic system, and therefore long-term prediction of future climate states is not possible. That's the truth. Well, how, then, if they're not in the prediction business, can anybody come out and say in 12 years you're going to have a problem? What they're doing is projecting that that's going to be a problem. What they're doing is they're actually saying, Neener to you, our plan's going to work, and we project you're going to be in this state when we get there. In 30, 2030, remember? The goals? It's all right here. So anyway, this is a big deal. I, I don't want to get... I've talked about this before. You either understand this and get this. This is the transparent destruction of everyone's life on the globe. I don't care who, and I don't have an ism to attach to it. There's just some people, they're organized better than you, they start to know you better than you, and they prey upon you, they exploit you. Uh, look what they're willing to do to a little girl, and move this thing, continue to move it forward. And they have people that don't even understand that's going on either. Those are like even more dangerous, because they're the ones that will come and actually hurt you. They don't just call you the heretic, they hurt you, because they think that they have a, they don't realize that they're in a religion either. This is how susceptible we are to suggest talk about it. hypnosis at some level but here you've heard it folks they project future climate changes and they do not and cannot absolutely zero cannot predict future climate since that's the case why are we even arguing as i told you it's a fraud to assert that they can tell the the day it's a fraud to then impose upon you under an authority it's actually a fraud to even assert it to make you, if you know how to do this thing in property, they don't even have the right to assert this against you. But unless you position your record in such a way that forces that, they get to continue as long as they want. And they'll claim that they have a right to say so. And I've shown you how that's not the case. But if you just want to yak and talk and talk from your opinion and pigeonhole all this stuff and what you think it is, instead of what they're doing, we're going to be ineffectual as people. And I'm talking global people. And so, brilliant. Eat the babies, folks. Eat the babies. Because we're not going to be here tomorrow. Why? I don't know. Because they project that. And you can accept it. Isn't this fascinating? It's a big projection screen. And you're all responding to it. Even the ones that deny it. So I say stop engaging the fraud. Stop calling it a hoax. It's a, it's a, it's a crime against mankind. And for all you trigger people, no, I didn't intend to uh, insult you women. You're, that's what mankind is part of that. It's all together. There used to be a time when we were intelligent, and we figured stuff out that way, and it wasn't, it wasn't an insult. Intelligence wasn't an insult. No, we get today where we have to get on the world stage, and we have to make a big issue in a form that shows and exposes an ultimate goal. This is exactly how you take this out. Ultimately goal that the people who are forcing it on incrementally won't even go there because they're incrementalists. I guess that's another. I mean, there's so much to talk about here. I just my mind's going nuts. But anyway, I got to keep it to this broadcast. You are hearing. My mind is the brilliant expose, and we can look right in there and see the lack of response. But I can point to you right to the documents that says that's exactly where they're going. Remember, let's go to the why. This is what is this? That they're projecting what? It ends up being for the most part in the next goal set. It's an economic. With a climate, and what are they doing? Well, it's a it's shared prosperity. What's that? That's what you got. Nothing. It's all to the state. You're sharing obligations and duties. What are those? I've identified them. They're punitive. Coming out the gate. What was that? That's the Green Deal. That's the new climate change. That's the carbon tax. It. it you are a pollution yourself, folks, my listeners. You need to pay for your pollution self, polluted self. 
And, and this woman came out and told you, if you're going to solve climate change, you're not going to be able to do it that way. You've got to eat the babies, folks. It's because, folks, eat the babies. Now, I've, I've offered, you can suggest to someone like AOC, to, why don't you just go down to Hawaii, climb the highest uh, volcano, and jump in and let Pele take care of you, and, and, and you can pray to Pele and do some good for, the, for, for Pele, uh, but you'll hear them say no. Now, that should be your second warning. So, I don't want to. I don't want to diminish this uh, brilliant, brilliant presentation. I do want to remind you what we're talking about. I do want to remind you it is global. I want to remind you, be careful not to shove it into an ism or an ist or whatever like that. It's a method of your destruction. I don't care what really what country you're really from, even without the the rights of, of let's say the land law that is there to protect us in in property. Whether or not we enjoy that right now is a different question. But uh, this point, that this response was based in a prediction that officials are putting out, is impossible in the, do in the documentation of those officials themselves that they've produced. They don't even know, believe this stuff, folks. They, they only want you to they project. And you can get into your, into your fantasy world. You can you can you you can go ahead and offer me your blue and red pills. You can go ahead and talk about uh, any other thing, a superhero, the end game, whatever you want to do. You can play the game of the theater, or else you can find out that's a projection, and you need to get real. There is no pills. Get off the meds, and start getting into the real world of real action because they are, and they're they're changing how you're going to be able to respond in that world it's the future we want and you ain't part of we and so this is brilliant i just i can't say that enough uh working group paperwork i've got two links you can go read the whole document if you finally understand what i've been saying and you want to see the source and so what am i saying there you start you shed everything if this becomes an interest to you and a and a problem if if you realize the the scope of the harm this is being punitively placed on everybody, and you don't like, don't think that's a good thing, and you go a little bit higher than that, say, well, I'm going to stop it because it comes against me and my family, or even just me or whomever, and those I might like, uh, and I have an insight, and I can find the work and the paperwork, and it doesn't take much to contain this. I don't have to read pages and pages and pages and volumes and books. I can just go to a couple spots to show the incongruity with their, their position call it out for the fraud it is, and then attach it to some liability and work for the accountability. If you understand what I just did here, and I'm just taking a long time to explain it, but I just went to the document. I found they can't project. I found that AOC suggests there's solutions. I want to know how she's going to do it. That's not a projection. And if that projection, even so, causes people to interfere with my property and rights and any other thing I might think is mine, we have crime going on that fast, folks. It's not an argument. I keep telling you how, how brilliant this was. If you understand the underlying parts of it, uh, these people knew something, uh, or, or maybe by accident. I don't know. They they pulled it. They, it's only one little part to it. It's, this is one way to go at it. It was brilliantly executed to the point so well. The the lady she out Greta Greted, folks. She outdid Greta. Absolutely did it right. Now, if you look carefully, she has some mannerisms that were not consistent with her with her words. So, that that was a clue to me to go back and listen again. And you might want to pick that up because that's gonna that's another that's another tool you'll need is looking at uh, as best you can. It's getting very difficult. Try not look at every aspect of what's going on so you're not deceived. And that's important. You have to build it. These guys, these people are magicians in a way. They're I tell you, they're chameleons. They're the parasitic amoeba that can ch it, it can change its uh, it transforms and adapts, folks. It's a, it's this, uh, they, they talk about going digital, but this is really an organic uh, thought here. It's really serious because uh, that can that's the thing that's going to integrate that they integrate with you, and you you they use that integration that parasitic attachment that you don't know is there or can't get rid of. This is my problem with most people that don't want to act to stop the stuff I can see should be at least a, at least a question where it's not. Like you're talking administrative procedures, you're letting the parasite attach to you. You don't know how to get rid of the worm. You don't know how to do it. You don't. You know. Anyway, so 
here's a word. I got a group working group list. If you want to go read some more, I just wanted to point out in two in two sentences, folks. You destroyed this whole thing. It's invoked in what the woman did to say, "Eat the babies." That the that the uh, pre chicken hatchling escapee had no response but to resort to the solution being hopium and change, hopium and change. And they're, what their hopium is, but they, you don't figure out the kind of political climate they're changing on you incrementally. And so we're going to tone it down, she says. We don't have to quite go there. So eat the babies, folks. I got the T-shirt. I thought was brilliant as well. Thank you very much for those people that did it. And it was found out to be a setup, uh, if you will, trolling. I think it was a brilliant expose. People, Most people may not understand most of it. I'm, I'm hoping not. I'm hoping people are becoming more and more aware. And don't dismiss it as the joke that they... I don't know if they intended it as a joke either, but they brilliantly played it off as a, as a joke. Uh, and it's uh, it's that psychopathic insanity that sits inside these people that would promote punitive harms against the world without any discussion on assumptions and presumptions that are mere projections on the minds of men and women. I, I, does that? Did you get that? For, is that powerful enough? Did you understand this, that the distinction is as simple as it is and how you defeat this? They project future climate changes. They do not predict future climate changes. In fact, they cannot predict even when they're projecting and getting you to buy in, because at any second, you could actually understand what's going on against you, and you could stop it, if you will stop it. And that's why they can't predict that either. If you've have the double the decoder ring, you'll see they're telling you their limitations inside their own documents. Not just that they can't predict, they have no science to predict the weather, but they also can't predict the political change that they're going to try and get you to do to yourself, even when you are doing, working by not doing anything. And that's how they've set it up. They've actually set it up if you don't respond and correctly. They've set a real high bar here. But it's not an impossible. Word. What are the, the court? Well, yeah, we brought it. In. It's an absolute immunity. Then we fail, but it's not infinite. Well, that's what I'm asking you. Go make that difference. They set it at an absolute bar, and we say it's not infinite. We're going to scale that bar. We're going to invent how we're going to go over it. We're going to evolutionarily engage it, and the, the only engagement is to identify it as the fraud that it is. No one, no one in that room. I guess no one. I'm going to go. Now that, that presentation, if you notice, if you look very carefully. She went, uh, the presenter of this idea, Eat the Babies, went to the far extreme within a group of people that did not shut her down. They would not speak against it because then that would then establish that they weren't what? Inclusive. They weren't agreeing to this. They weren't agreeing to someone saying that. And they couldn't deny it either. Because the documentation will tell you that what she was, the end result would not offend, I guess I should say, would not offend the psyche of these people. She prefaces on the li- on the longer uh, on the longer. I don't remember if she says it on this one. Save the save the uh, save the planet, eat the babies. There's a, a, a I think a little bit longer discussion. She actually pref- which is another brilliant part. She prefaces an authority on a Swedish professor who says talks about cannibalism. Okay, so this was a perfect setup. This was she just she moved the authority away from the con- congresswoman uh, onto a professor in the university system, folks, exposing that nonsense. This is global. So uh, if you think you're escaping it, don't. Soylent Green to eat babies, save the planet, folks. The planet is the most important thing. But that's that's not what they're after. They're after controlling you. And that that and and, and everything. I mean, ultimately. This is what the, the psychopathic power does un, unaccountably. And this is where I've been asking you step up. Find one of these wrongs. Well, so I've been talking that this is an economic construct of many things. Ultimately, you, you function through the, I'll say, I, I don't like the word economic, but I'll use it because most people understand it, the economic systems that you have available. This is partly why the FRN becomes a problem. This is partly why they installed it. So, and we had a choice. We still always, still always have the choice to not engage it, but we, we're uh, weak people or we're lazy or whatever we are. We're just that people that won't really take up the task, uh, learn the principles uh, and apply them that we need to to protect ourselves against this nonsense. Now, we want to argue. How many, how many people and times I'm seeing people arguing on climate change when they admit it's just a projection, not a prediction? 
If it's just a projection, it can't be science just by that word, isn't it? And so why are we arguing science here? I told you, don't do that. Point it out to be the fraud. Point out to the punitive harms they're doing with this and start going after everybody that wants to help and aid and abet them, just like we sued in 2013. Let me, let, let me go after this thing. Uh, 2030 was shared prosperity. It's showing you that it's an economic construct. I want to move into just going quickly through Wikipedia just to show you, you can build up what this stuff is and what do you call it? Well, uh, you know them when you see them. So you can give it kind of any name, but you know them when you see them. Where do I get that? Libra code, military consequence of the world. You're underneath a military force power rule, and, and that's it. And until you've figured that out, you won't realize you're in that battlefield. You'll probably never do the next other uh, understanding that I've been explaining to you. How do you move in a battlefield in occupied territory globally? Well, you can't do it globally. So anyway, you're in occupied territory. You, uh, money, many levels of occupation. Uh, it doesn't. There's not just one. That makes it overwhelming. But uh, at some point, I'm not. I still feel pretty optimistic. Now, I guess once you see stuff, you, it's kind of orients. If I'm a sniper in the dark without a scope, I guess I'm going to be afraid that I've got an enemy coming at me I can't see. But once I have a scope, who cares, right? And if I'm a, if I'm good, it's a good sniper. I'm I'm going to do pretty good on the battlefield, likely. It doesn't mean I'm going to do it on myself for very long, maybe. So that's why we get the support structure that comes in. And just as an, it's, it's an analogy. I don't know. You can make any kind of analogy either. Are you going to get involved? When you hear this, do you get involved enough to say, I'm going to stop some? I, got to, I see what's going on now. Now we're going to stop this. That's what's going on. That's what this carbon tax is. That's what these regulations are for. That's why they legalize marijuana. That's why this, that, and the other. I mean, all this um, stuff. And then we find one of the core people. Four core groups is the Bar Association. Who to say they're going to support this thing, the weapon, one of the weapons of which is climate change. They support that, and you now find it's a projection. So you have the Bar Association in their own documents saying they're going to enforce and promote a projection on your life. Folks, leave the movies. Leave the theater, would you please? Please. And let's look at this economics. Shared prosperity. Oh, doing some research. I mean, I, I don't like... Again, you can call it the ism, but here's where it comes down, the definitions. It gives you an idea of how you can identify this is not what it might be in order to give you an idea on what ultimately you're dealing it with, because this is important on identifying how you're going to destroy it. Why I looked at leveraged funding wasn't because of Wikipedia for sure. What I'm saying is I can go back through the Wikipedia and see the definitional bases that they may put terms on for, for what you can research down, that ends up being what you see on the ground. And like I said, I've always been saying this for years, you know them when you see them. So whatever name you want to put on, it's fine with me. What are you seeing working on the ground that's harming you is what you're going to stop. Now, getting into what do you call this thing, I tend to believe it's more of a fascist type of thing, and we can look to that right now. Why? Because in the new, the definition since what, Mussolini that he, ma he makes the, you know, I think I have links for that. He describes it. He's got a whole bunch of documentation you can read about what fascism is. And this is kind of where it gets a little bit odd. Some of these things really directly apply and some of them don't. And some, a lot of them don't apply the way people understand today. Uh, and I'm saying that because when you, you, like, people will use the word corporatocracy or corporatist. And they're talking about a corporation's running. No, that's not really what that actually did. They are, they're close and it has an element to this point. But they're just a small part of how this actually functions, and this is the other kind of problem. People get focused on these smaller points. There's a more comprehensive attack that's going on. Uh, that uh, anyway, so you can understand it's that you can see it, but it's not actually any one of these things. Is what I've been saying. So I looked at okay, what are you seeing that they're doing is what you attack. It doesn't matter what you call them. It doesn't matter how they what costume they wear. If they're doing a certain act a certain way, and then I show you, you go to black and white. Uh, the penal codes that say this extortion, that's what you call it. You don't call it an ism, you call it a crime. Uh, you don't make that up either. So economics of fascism is what I came across quickly. Remember the fasci, the, the bundle of weeds, uh, uh, wheat and all they put up, that's in the Congress. So, you know, you can, you can drag, I don't want to move them. You have to go see the observation of where all this exists in your life already. Uh, notwithstanding when I tell you about the protections that are already in law that would stop all this if we were just to assert it as a mass of people. And these is, these are actually, uh, I guess uh, in the Western societies, these are universal. So I think they're applicable across borders as well. But the economics of fascism, we can talk to, 
uh, about what this is. This the solutions to where they want to go, what they want you to buy into, end up being the uh, can be described as the economics of fascism, which you can read about on Wikipedia. And it's the general characteristics. The first fascist movements arose in the last years of the World War One. So now we're down back to the time. I've got to kind of put, I'm going to go kind of do, like as I do, throw stuff in. Trading with the Enemy Act, right? So this is a problem for us. Why? Because then you go to Title 50 and you go down to the sub to the notes and you see that the support for Title 50, which is the military uh, imposition on your life in, in the United States of America and globally, as we see it, there's no borders now, folks. They went the other way. Notwithstanding the, the prison they want to make for you with the wall, uh, there's no borders at the power of the United States and its power to enfor enforce itself, uh, impose itself. That uh, the Trading with the Enemy Act uh, is one of the uh, ongoing uh, emergencies that Title 50 speaks to and the tied, uh, 1913 uh, FRN or the 12B, uh, US, USC 12. 95B, uh, I think it was. And and so you start to see, if you understand some of the background, you do some research on this. If you haven't done the research, you think I'm a nut. I mean, you think I'm just talking, oh, it sounds, oh, it sounds, I, you believe me because I've been, you know, pretty straight up pretty, the whole these years. What I'm, on, I'm saying is if you go read it, it's no doubt. It's no doubt that there's no science in, in climate uh, change, the imposition. It's no doubt it's a political movement. It's no doubt it's an economic political movement. Here we have the connection now between an ism and an economic war, uh, construct that you can start to see it's done in the world. Whether I understood this all before or not, it's done in the world. We can find evidences of it. And when you see the elements of this working, you don't have to call it a name. You just say, that's a crime. But like I showed you in the Libra Code. Number one, Article 1, they tell you, martial law can be imposed. They don't have to tell you. You know them when you see them, essentially. Right? You have to know what you're seeing. That's the point. And if it's transparent, they make everything transparent. How are you supposed to see them? That's an interesting trick. So you're going to have to be a little more integrated to start seeing the invisible, if you will, the transparent. The first fascist movements arose in World War I. They were a form of radical nationalism. And understand how they apply these words today. you got this national movement going on. All this stuff is integrating again today. It's never really gone away. It becomes important for certain political ends. And to bring on this bigger thing that comes incrementally, I, I see again, all this so much to talk about. I've also explained to you the United States government is integral, inter, integrated in promoting this. The EPA is one of the pillars of this agenda. So if you, if you, think, if you think that you're away from it here, really, you've really been missing what I've been saying or just walking away too soon or, or, or not engaging. You'd like to just hear, maybe you'd like to hear the sound of my voice, which I would be a surprise, but at any rate, Whatever reason you, you listen and don't respond, I don't know, but you're not putting it together. What's always ongoing and repeating itself that we can then find are the elements of certain things that we can at least get a handle on. And once we see what that grabbing that handle, looking at what we're looking at, you can taste, taste it, touch it, whatever you want to do, whatever, whatever causes you to understand it better, uh, then you can, you can get a, you can get a, get a, an idea, gauge what you need to start doing. And I bring to you how we do this. It's a, one a few aspects on how you do this. So in World War I, fascism becomes like something out there. Uh, they were a form of radical nationalism carrying a promise of national rebirth. Make America great again, folks. They blamed, they blamed liberalism, socialism, and materialism. So it's none of those things. In fact, if you read the stuff of Mussolini, uh, he'll te they'll tell you. And they'll tell you this is a, a non-religion religion in a way. It's a faith without the without the higher constructs. Okay. So if you go read about this stuff, and then you start looking at what they're doing to us, you start realizing you know them when you see them. This is what they're doing. Whether whether or not that's actually this word or not, I don't. That's not my point. This is the stuff you start seeing. They bring in your face to agree or not agree, and it's the it's the false front to what's going on behind to bring on what is the real the real core. Their actions become transparent partly because you're stuck on these these conceptings that they place place in in your face. Uh, you get focused on that, or you don't understand to see the transparency if you could look past it. And uh, so materialism for the decadence they perceived, perceived, projecting, folks. This is all the same in society and culture, and they expressed an appreciation for violence and the role of leadership and willpower in shaping society. Isn't that the definition of the United States in the world? 
Yeah, I'm not wanting to focus on us in the United States either, but this is, oh, you look around, you'll see these elements here. I mean, they talk about here, they bring up Mussolini, bringing it up and talking about it. You can read the doc documentation. It says, fascism rose to a power by taking advantage of the political and economic climate. Have you ever heard this stuff before, folks? When I'm predicting, this is not talking about the weather. And this is whether or not you understand it's political in whatever sector of your life there is. These are political and economic climate of the 1920s and the 1930s, particularly the deep polarization of some European societies, such as the Kingdom of Italy and Weimar Germany, which were democracies with elected parliaments dominated by supporters of laissez-faire capitalism and Marxian socialism, whose intense opposition to each other made it difficult for stable governments to be formed. So, in a way, I want to read and I don't want to read. There's so much to talk about when you apply it to what's going on in the world today. So they come in and they have a dynamic between Marx and lack of property and, and property. But it's an adulterated on each side. So you have, if you buy into laissez-faire capitalism, you're part of this same discussion they've been having, at least identified under, under the condition that it brings out economics of fascism. Uh, you're not any different than that discussion. At any rate, so let's accept that or reject it as you will. Remember, this is we're talking about democracy. You know, we have direct democracy. It's going outside of this form as well. But you see that there's going to be this division between laissez-faire capitalism and socialism. Anywhere you see that, it's actually really working through. Uh, what's moving through both of those is an economic fascism. Fascism opposed both international socialism and free market capitalism, arguing that their views presented a third position, the third way, folks. The third wave. You hear this stuff in the in what we've been talking about uh, in all this uh, solutions to sustainable development. They claimed uh, to provide a realistic economic alternative. Alternatives, folks. This is all what this our world's about. They offer an alternative and try and get someone to buy into it. If you get a massive dem democratic mob to agree, you win essentially. They favor it. So if you don't object to it, it's going to win. Most of they finally get what they need. They get the future they want. Uh, they favored corporatism and class collaboration. In other words, corporatism and class collaboration. These are collaborators. What did I talk to you about? What have I said? All these words are all in what's going on today. Whether or not it's actually what they're doing is now we see the elements that this economic fascism is, is really has the, starting to have these elements that if you find them, you can, instead of calling it anything, call it economic fascism, but then go to where it's going to take you. And that teaches you, shows you, guides you on how you're going to defeat it. And that's why I say you go to the laws, land disposal laws, you defeat all this stuff. I don't care what ism it is. That law is either effective, is affecting, is, is effective for you, or else you have a criminal before you. I don't care what costume they're wearing. This is why I talk to you about how you identify that the costume has no authority quickly. You don't or discuss anything with them. You're laying out the, you're building the law, the facts, and the con concurrence with that. Now, collaboration, collaborators, right? Team players, partnerships, uh, was beneficial, contrary to the views of socialists, while also arguing that the state had a role in mediating re relations between classes. And so we have in the United States a classless society, they tell us, but you, we have class society. And that's another law. But anyway, an important aspect of fascist economies was economic dirigism, meaning an economy where the government often subsidizes favorable companies and exerts strong directive influence over investment as opposed to having merely regulatory role. In general, fascist economies were based on private property and private initiative but these were contingent upon service to the state. And when I say that, how is that not exposed as an element under private corporations called non-governmental organizations or, or other associations or corporations that are privately oriented and are accepting through their private initiative the things that the state wants to do through what I have exposed to you is leveraged funding, which they steal from property owners and other taxpayers. Okay, so 
again, he knows them when you see them. We can put this these as I talk, talk in elements, and all of a sudden you can develop. Even if you can't see the transparent or see the beast, you can't see this thing. You can outline it pretty well. And once you outline it pretty well, I can tell you the, the flesh comes on it pretty quick. At least you know you're dealing with something and not just an aberration that you wait for hopium to take effect. Because it's what you know, your hopium is not force and effect in the world at all. In general, fascist economies were based on private property and private initiative. And I'm suggesting to you strongly that when the insiders know the agenda, they position themselves in order to accept the initiative, uh, which is the what? The taxation payments, the grant stream funding that comes out. Fascist governments encouraged the pursuit of private profit and offered many bene benefits to large businesses, but they demanded in return that an economic activity should serve the national interest. Isn't that what we have in the United States? Not to say, to put any actual title on it. If you can see that, then you understand what you're dealing with. It's not communism. It's not socialism. Economically, it looks more like fascism, but we don't even deal with it like that. What I'm trying to point out to you is when she said, these Ocasio says uh, solutions, you're going to do it. This is all subject to the state by any name. Remember, even laissez-faire capitalism got embraced in this in this condition. So you could be promoting laissez-faire capitalism, you could be a staunch supporter and promoter of it and actually see things going. You have to look and see what the force and effect of it is. And this is now, I'm going to remind you of Clint Richardson's documentary, Corporation Nation, where he says you've got these stakeholders, uh, excuse me, the, uh, the board members are other company corporations and the government itself to integrate all this stuff. If you're not aware of all this, you don't understand how the integration works. You don't understand really what you're really up against. So what Acosta is talking about solutions fits the implementation of what will happen through what I've identified to you as this consensus network of using stakeholders, which are the stakeholders to do the will of this government. And its policies, the legislative side, are not uh, regulatory. They're actually incentives for these private endeavors to promote the agenda, which if you look at the United States and just the EPA alone, you see, is to enforce at least one pillar of the sustainable development. Can't be a good thing. Can't, cannot be a good thing on the, on the front end of it, is what we're talking about. Now, what are the government agendas? Well, you've got to start looking at that, and all of a sudden you start seeing the license it gives to kill you, and you realize that maybe life is not so precious. And maybe it's time to eat babies, folks. So I can read on and on and on. I did want to make this setup. Let's go back to uh, dirigism because it's an element of it. Dirigism is the economic doctrine in which the state plays a strong directive role as opposed to merely regulatory role over capitalist market economy. Now, we have an uh, argument with the Fed being there that anything could be capitalist given that it's all underneath the full faith and credit of a, well, I think that's a lie too, of the United States. And when you look at the when money is involved through the 1913 Act and Title 28 U.S.C. 2000, 3002, you see you can treat the government as a, as a corporation. Is that where I get stuck? No, I don't get stuck on that. There's more to see. There's, that's just how you treat it in a, certain, in a certain time and manner, in a certain time and place. Everything in its time and place. And if you keep track of all this, you'll be much more effective. You'll, be effect, you'll become more effective if not effective in what your intention is to, if your intention is to stop this nonsense. You can call it a capitalist market economy, not know that it's being ridden, driven by a economically fa an economic fascism. So you can focus on your little point and do it, and you can be free to do that, but that's being used at the other, on another place. You know, dur Duragistic, uh, duradiste policies often uh, include indictive planning, state-directed investment, and the use of market instruments, taxes and subsidies. And so leverage funding is also in there. So, again, I didn't actually think about it showing that the United States is sitting here, but it, it has all these elements too. I want to point out the global condition is it doesn't matter really what you call these things. When they start working through a centralized system, you're probably dealing in that, with that system in attempting to, in, in, in addressing, if you think you can address it. If you don't address that, you're not going to be effective. They just have ways around it. In, uh, another term in this uh, duragist, uh, duragism, uh, this definition, was indic in, indic indicative uh, pr planning. So now we get back to the idea of planning. And this is another important part. It starts in the SMART, S-M-A-R-T, 
condition. SMART is the method, the generalized method with how they go about doing what they do. Okay, so if you go get the document, it, it'll it starts to, it starts to explain what to anticipate. If they're in one, if they're in the S mode, they're going to go to M. If they're going in the M mode, they're going to A. When they're done with A, they're going to go to R. If they have a problem in in A and R, they might go back to S to, uh, to S to get more um, more information. Uh, however, that is okay. So th this is how another way you can track it real simply. But indicative planning, it's all about planning. In fact, how we solve the smoke problem? Well, we didn't solve it. We, we um, inter majorly interfered with its, uh, its with the imposition of wildfire by going and interfering with their planning. Now they talk about it in economic terms. This ends up can be reduced to economic terms, but it's it's this can be expressed across all the su sub matters uh, that are within this this type of a what you can now see becomes uh, at least in one sense economic fascism. Indicative planning is a form of economic planning implemented by a state in, in an effort to solve the problem of imperfect, imperfect information in a market and mixed economies in order to increase economic performance. Then you ask by whose standard and for what end. And this is where we miss it. We miss that there's a standard in the end that you are not familiar with, that all these things start to, to come down. And you, you again, if you speak in too particularized before, if you... Think and and, a, and address things in a too a particularized manner before you backtrack which path they're going down. You'll answer wrong as well, and this starts to be a little bit a little bit of work. But once you see that you have these things to check, it's just a matter of going through a mental list of questions in your mind. Okay, what's this? It's not even questions. It's observing. They're going here, 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 and here. Why did I tell you in our lawsuit? I waited till the very end of the legislative session, and I said right near the end. They haven't figured out a way to pay for this, or they have, and they're not letting us know. Follow the money was another thing in my mind. I was waiting to see how were they going to appropriate the money to impose all these punitive harms on people. It hadn't been done yet, and without it, we could defeat it for no perf No, They couldn't actually implement it. So I started to look. It was one of the pieces of the puzzle missing was the funding of this punitive harm against people. Sure enough, it showed up, didn't it, folks? And we sued on that, didn't we? We didn't sue on the moratorium against the miners. We initiated the claim on the leverage funding to punitively harm people violating their property rights, which goes against laws of the United States for mining, in this case, and, our, uh, and other things, uh, timber harvesting, but more, mostly for the mining. And so that's a, that's a treason. And so we got it to it quick. It wasn't something I had to know tons and tons. I just had to know I was looking for something. They have to fund this thing. It's about economics, folks. This, I was looking for leverage funding. The thing that you can see here is indicative planning, and it's also part of the dirigism that is an incentive to move people into doing certain things. And there's a ton of people that love to make work and, and bring it on. You can see it's in, you know, by this, in, this practice is, is throughout the world. So I guess what I'm talking here, this is global stuff. I mean, France, China, or social, you know, US, Socialist Republic, they've changed now, not the USSR, but it's not changed there. You, you see Putin, Putin is, is embracing this thing uh, big time. And I've talked to you about all their surrogate uh, funding and, and international exchange, what, SWIFT, and then, I don't even know, I don't remember it anymore. What, they was kind of go, got silent in the news. Uh, my International Monetary Fund is the overseer. Remember, all his directors are in the other one. I can't remember now what the other one was. Well, they, they, got, uh, they got Asia involved, right? So this is all a continuous global planning, but it's done underneath these elements. If you start watching, you don't have to know so much. You just have to know to look for elements. And interestingly, for as uh, weak as it might be, Wikipedia is a good start for us to go right on through and see uh, some of this. As I said, they will not explain to you when they're talking about a certain view uh, or that they're talking about a certain view being implemented through these things as conduits of implementation. And so we get to corporatism, and it's a political ideology. See, all these things are thoughts, philosophies. Now, my, my property and my rights and, and the law that protects it and the institution that's supposed to be there are not, is not a really a, an ideology or philosophy. It's a, it's a functioning mechanism. Mechanism, actually, how we counter all this stuff. But corporatism is a political ideology which advocates the uh, organization of a society by corporate groups such as agriculture, labor, military, scientific, guild associations on the basis of their common interests. Now, what's the common interest? You know, the community, right? Whatever one they want to make. You notice military is in there. 
I tell you, we're under a military construct. It's for the forces. They went to national security. Why is that a question? But when you look at closely, this political ideology is not actually the the totality of it. It's a small. It's a, included within other things, and partly. And now we get to what I was talking about, the Pope, and why I could see he was integrated when he started doing the sustained, sustainable speak. Now, corporatist ideas have been expressed since ancient Greek and Roman societies with integration into the Catholic social teaching and Christian democracy political parties. They have been paired by various advocates and implemented in various societies with a wide variety of political systems, including authoritarianism, authoritarianism, absolutism, fascism, liberalism, and socialism. It's just an ism, folks. It's incorporated. Well, I could tell you when the Pope finally stood up, what is it, 2015, and laid out all his stuff, what he was going to do to, you know, what he's going to get the adherence to tie on to the green religion. And I said, watch out, here's the, here's the global religion now getting all itself organized up. It doesn't matter. It's an economic construct. They want you to be in sustainable debt. That's the ultimate thing. And they're going to do it to the ends of whoever is running the, the system that gets the, your buy-in. And silence is a buy-in. And so you go through, this is very interesting too, they tie in the Roman Catholic Church with pro corporatism. So even if you're talking corporatist, corporate, corporatism, you're only talking a small part. You're not looking wide enough on this thing. And all this really is, when you look at, I guess I could say it in a minor say, this is some people have looked at in the history and said, we, we need this, con however they, we can define the elements, we need these elements to do this certain thing. And I'm saying take down what they do as their modus operandi and you can just deconstruct it and then you know how to get at them. Now why I can, when I see these, I can predict how these things will be eventuating themselves together because they're going to follow these patterns. And until they change, I have no need to go look really much further even though I read the peripheries on where might these things move to and go in the future. Where might they adjust? Remember, it's the parasitic amoeba. You put a pin, an obstacle, one point pin in front of it, it's going to go around it. You put two, it's going to go, you got three more, three spots to go around. It's like it's almost, you got four and it got all these other spots around. You can put pins all around it. Depending on the type of amoeba, maybe it'll climb up the pins and go over it like a, maybe a snail going over a razor blade. This thing may not be stoppable until you kill it, see? So you can't just throw in that you don't like it. You've got to literally work to figure out ways to go. It's infested the body. You need to you need to figure out a way to kill it. It's like a cancer that that uh, is is the you can't you don't know how to kill quite yet. And yet it's it's you can you can kill it. And so they come under a, a hopium says we've got solutions. We uh, inti imit intimating maybe we don't have to quite eat the babies just yet. Put your t-shirt away. But what was the promotion was ultimately an economic servitude. Shared prosperity. I've talked about all this. Agenda 2030. You go back in the in the archives. I think those are still available. You can listen on what uh, where to go read. I read this stuff to you. You read between the lines. I do my magic decoder stuff for you. Some of it. And so we have a. If you wanted to see the harms that are done, it affects the poor people. Why you see this big disparagement between the billionaires now that there are any and no and everyone else. This one percent, whatever they are, doesn't matter. Remember, they can still be the top 5% in an inoculation. They'll be safe on their own theories. So they can be 5% of the billionaires in this world, and uh, the herd is going to be protected. It uh, will be unable to affect them, remember? So this is, they're telling us some uh, reversed uh, application. But why is there the big disparagement? Because of because they want everybody poor. They want everybody, everybody's being put into a state of servitude. And I'll say voluntarily because I don't see anybody, again, consenting is, silence is the consent. Uh, we have a, 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 now a word here. If you didn't understand the dynamic, some of which I agree uh, wholeheartedly and in other, in other parts I don't agree and partly because I do not agree that climate change is a thing. It's a crime. It's not a thing. It's a crime. It may be a thing and a crime, but it's not a thing as far as the crisis, the thing that you think the weather's changing. And if you don't pay attention to what's going on, you're going to get nailed with this thing. It's gotten, again, it's gotten cold. I keep telling you folks. Not that I, am I saying it's going to glaciers? No. The weather is the weather. But there's indications it's going cold. So you start listening to global warming and you think 0 0.0000018 centigrade degree increase is going to save you or harm you. You, you're, you've missed the trick. Well, that's the trick. 
go ahead and they got you to th they got you actually looking at that number instead of saying stop wasting my time and stop destroying my my country stop destroying my laws stop destroying my property more importantly and if you don't have property rights where you should have, then others don't either, and your whole society's down the tubes. But how climate policies hurt the poor? I thought this was important to read through. Like I said, I don't agree that you need to focus on climate change because it's a political climate, actually. It's a political force in the world that's a global and coming in to do these things to harm people. Everything they do is punitive. I don't know how anybody can be okay with that. But anyway, the uh, discussion here, how climate policies hurt the poor, has to set up why there's more and more poor. Everybody's poor. Everyone's going to be harmed. It has nothing to do with the climate. And yet, if you disregard the climate, all those homeless people are going to be harmed again. And so, it's not that we're, un we're uncompassionate. But there was a thing in this country where charity was separate and private. Now they've privatized, publicized the private charity into welfare, and that's no good either. And then you lose your sense of compassion in a society and empathy as well. There's reasons underneath the color of a religion, if you will, if that's what you need to have a moral sense, a caring sense, an empathetic sense. But that's being stripped as way over time. You may still feel it. Your offspring or those down the road to the next generation likely won't because of what you heard this lady doing with Anacostia's hopium response. How climate policies hurt the poor? An insight here, folks. It, he, um, he then wants to go with free trade. Remember, laissez-faire trading can still be within a system of control that we identify as economic fascism. And don't ever forget the fasci that are sitting in the Congress. If you thought this place was set up for you, it was set up as a republic if you could keep it. It didn't mean that there wasn't going to be a fascism that wasn't going to come and try and take you down. And so, indicative of things, indicative planning, folks, there you go. Indicative of the future, if I can put it in the context behind which it's how I can kind of predict the future for you. There's just certain mechanisms that are going to have to follow. Once you realize the beast has to go from its lair to the waterhole every day, it's not hard to, well, it might be difficult, a little bit of work to dig the pit, but that animal is going to be stuck in there uh, the night, uh, the day that it needs to go to water, because it's, does, it's, a, it's a creature of its habit. It's a natural parasite. It doesn't look like it. It comes through government. But it's people inside working this through with objectives that you may or may not understand. And I'm not here to claim I understand it fully. All I know is when I see enough elements, I know them when I see them, folks. They're a creature of that same habit. And rarely, rarely do they change. And if they do, they don't change very far. In fact, it's a joke amongst my, myself and my colleagues, the ones that I work with, in addressing these people. It's really kind of a a joke about how predictable these people are. And because they're predictable, you can be so far into the future of their action, it's, it's not funny, and they don't even understand that. It doesn't mean they're not cunning and smart. It doesn't mean that maybe one day they decide to change the path, but you, that's all you're looking for now. And then you know they're, now you know how cunning and smart they are with where they went. And, you, and you're already ahead of it, so you can, you're like looking over the problem, not being a, you're not on the path with that beast. Most people put themselves on that path, the wrong, they're off the path, actually, the narrow path you should be on. They get up in the forest and they get themselves in the, in the, in the rough, and it, it gets rough. So, I'm trying to keep you outside of that by anticipating all this. Why I'm saying to you that presentation, you know, because, folks, eat the babies is so brilliant when you understand what that targets. Their lack of response, and yet what the solutions in the future they are intending that she was silent to explain and disclose to you. You're just looking at a criminal. I don't have a sense about it. I don't really, it's not like I take a big holding to it. They're just criminal in their being. And all we have in this world apparently is hopefully you get some accountability or to make distance on that and, and hope you can, they don't get a whole horde of them becoming a Genghis Khan and then knock on your door. And so I don't I try to keep everybody heads up on this stuff so they can be ahead, ahead and, and do better. And my, I really do believe because it's identifiable, whatever name you put, you can, I don't care what, you can put Chinese, Russian, Israeli, the Israelis, you can put the poor people, you can put blacks, uh, yellow, red, you can put any ism on this thing you want. 
It won't change what they're doing to you, but you have to stop that. And so I don't get into the ists and all that. It, it just, it just never, it, it very quickly lost its, its flavor. When I started to see, as you just see, and that's why I'm bringing it up today, economic fascism was a part incorporating others. They defined themselves as a faith, full faith and credit in the United States for its money, folks. Faith. But didn't really have a God, but moved, moved in faith. And we see the Catholic Church tying into that. It was a religion of supposed faith, and you had to be faithful to what they were pushing. Were parts, not the whole. They're like building blocks of something moving forward in a direction. If you have, if you're looking at this, if you're just looking at an, a bolt on a on a battleship, you, you don't you don't get it. You're not getting it. If you think you see even a panel with a bunch of bolts on the, you're not getting it. You're still not getting it. You can actually see it that it's you focus in on the on the, the deck. You can actually observe the sun shining in on the deck of the of the battleship. You're still not getting it. You literally have to come off of that thing. Stop getting so close to it. Stop defining it at the battleship and go look at the destination that it's intending. It's going to make war there. If it's not already shooting rounds. And in the United States, we're so, we've been in the battle for so many years, people don't even recognize it. Now, I, I try to point out to you the Middle East again comes up. It's a, a macabre uh, carnival mirror that reflects back on the United States. Now, do I, do I, they take all the words there that they use and, and put them in the United States. No, you'd have to change change who the players are for the United States, but the result becomes the same. And so we take the information that we have and we either deny it, we ignore it, or, or we really do something about it. And again, if, if I hadn't been doing what I've been doing, not just talking, but doing, to come to you to tell you, hey, this stuff works. Some of this stuff works for sure. And if what what works, we have this certain, what, um, result? And maybe more results will give us a better piece of information. We have the same problem with data acquisition as well. Only ours is on the, on the tip of the, we're on the battle side. We make a mistake, it could be in our life. So this is a very serious joke, if it's a joke at all. And that's why I say it's so brilliant what happened. Because, folks, eat the babies. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. I can't, I'm laughing, not funny as heck, and I'm laughing. I've been laughing. The inside of those people, whoever you want to call them, I understand they were the, were the group. I could care less. They executed on a way to expose something, whether or not people are going to understand that. And you saw how they tried to cover it up. You didn't see many, if anyone, come out and expose the nuances of, of that. No, you get President Trump saying she, uh, AOC's a whack job. Okay, well tell me how. Don't call her names. Even even AOC called the lady uh, mentally destabilized and that, that her finding out it was a setup didn't disprove that. But that's just, uh, what, at how, is, that a, is that the ad, ad hominem attack in some regard? Character assassination without proof? See, they do, they don't respond to tell you the facts. So I came with, I, with my observation to say, you're, you've just witnessed a, a brilliant thing. Can you, can you put that into context and then give, become fortified in the fact that they, there's no answer to the truth? You need to be the truth in action. Really? Stop, I keep saying, talk is cheap. Truth is action. And so it takes some, some action. Action, court case? Yeah, okay, let's move on. U.S. Supreme Court denies Orange County's request over, um, over what, folks? What, what possibly would the Supreme Court deny a municipality for? On April 18th, the United States Supreme Court denied Orange County petition of certiorari filed in October 2010. Nine years, folks. If you don't Justice creeps and crawls if you think this is justice. Anyway, we've allowed it all. The petition arose from a 2007 jury verdict of $4.9 million against Orange County and two of its social aid services agents. Two of its social services agents, names irrelevant, the plaintiff in the action, name irrelevant, filed the suit in 2001 of February, alleging the defendants violated her civil rights 
when they lied to a juvenile dependency court judge to obtain orders authorizing them how, how to remove and detain her daughters. The children were separated from her for approximately six and one half years. This is the story of someone who got into this thing before I even knew about it, but I'm in that time right at 2000, maybe, maybe at the beginning when I'm into this, watching how this works. Took her all this time suing. How does she win, folks? So what I've been telling you to identify on the record is the only reason why I'm talking to you. How do you defeat this thing? Yet and still, there's some objective basis. It may be slim, but it's there. And if you focus your attention, it may take you 10, 20 years to get justice. But you do get the justice. And more importantly, you show others how it's done and why I keep telling you to make a record where they've made a fraud, a lie, or whatever. It says right here they violated even her civil rights, even when you're under the exactions of every kind. If they lie to you, they become liable. And now we start to see, as I've been telling you, why it's important to get the record, not your opinion they're lying, because that's real fast to feel and to sense and even think you've proved it. You have to focus on, this is one, frauds, any sorts of frauds or others, but straight up lying is something that the occupying force cannot do and can be caught on. If you put it, understand of the future of how you put your case together, that it can be made that the court can't do anything else. And so that my whole focus on that, I've been telling you, you just don't walk in with your opinion. you got a job to do. If you want justice, there's a court there. I don't agree with the length of time, but this is where we've are, we are. And until we start getting a society that's integrated with, with this injustice, this delay to justice. A delay to justice is injustice, folks. If it, this is when you start seeing the absolutes of this. The infinity of this at this point is that a lie is actionable and prevailing. Again, you can prevail against the government. The soldiers can't lie. This is partly like the Clean Water Act. If you lie about the, by omitting to tell that you did a, a dump in the, in, the, in the river, you're going to be penalized. If you don't lie, go ahead and dump whatever, up to up to minimums, go ahead and dump it. Dump your dump. And so this is really the story of here is, to me, and there's more to read in here. It depends on your interest. But here, you can get them when you expose a lie. Now, I'm not saying just focus on it. This is part and parcel of the things you're looking to gather evidence for in an objective basis. All right, so this is a how you start to defeat the point, why did I, okay, so if it's a, if a lie is actionable, let me get back to the point in the pre-chicken hatchling escapee, oh, we got hopium, no, if you don't disclose, see, remember, the felony is even the omission to disclose, the omission to do something that's right in the law, becomes, that affects you in your rights, becomes a cr high crime and misdemeanor. When she failed, when she turns to say the, the one who just, that she didn't know at the time was trolling her, but fails to say the solution that she wants to impose is punitive without harm, she's committed a felony right there. And that's actionable. Now, that's this case I'm talking is judicial. You don't go after the congresswoman in a judicial capacity. In fact, there's really no no point to it. But don't you have, you want to you propound and beat on your chest over your First Amendment right, your Second Amendment well, the First Amendment says you have a right to petition Congress. Now, this is going to, I'm going to just say up front, disclaimer, I have not quite done that yet. We're, uh, we're right there, though. We're about ready to go do this. And so we have the right to petition and be first in our position with the facts of the deception, which creates what? An imposition on our property rights punitively, which the Supreme Court, I just told you, we've got the word, word that that's unlawful absolutely straight up unlawful, that we now present a case that's not a question to Congress and petition to resolve. We could do that. Are, anybody, are any of you going to? I don't know. But we're not helpless. We don't have to wait 20 years to go in order to put our petition in. We can start the 20 years by going to Congress and petition if you want to enforce your constitutional rights to stop an omission of declaring what sustainable development does and the weapon that climate change has become and uh, the admission that we don't need to eat babies. We can do something else. 
Well, what would that be? It's all projection. What would that be? So now we got you in another fraud. How fat, How hard is this to expose this, folks? It's really, in my mind, it's zero. And so that nobody else does this or really brings it forward and would rather argue is really an astonishment to me. And then doesn't, and as the, as you find those like under 18 USC 4 and 3, when you present it to the one, the authority that's supposed to do something and they don't do something, you rolled them up in the misprison of felony under, four, under USC 4, 18 USC 4, don't you? Oh yeah, you're going to have a big monstrous snowball, but if you keep it nice and tight, well, it, it, you, can com you can compress it a little bit. It's just, it just bullet points of everybody that didn't fulfill their duty. Now, is that going to get anything happening? Well, I don't know if you're not going to present it, if you're not going to start the bullet point list, and you go off on your tangents, and you say Putin did it. You go off on your tangents, and say China's doing it. You, you, oh, the Israels, the Israelis are doing it. No, 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 this is local. I don't care who they are in an office. You can get after them if they're causing these troubles. What you witness, and this is one of my other points about this thing, this brilliant application, I was hoping that it wouldn't come out that it was, I don't think it's a trolling, I think it's actually an expose, that it wasn't. Why? Because then that would have been a claim that's, that she is alarming the public to be this way. Her, Ocasio, Ocasio, and anyone else that supports sustainable development is, a, is alarming the public. That's not supposed to be done. And if you kind of listen to as I over time, you listen to what I'm saying, I'm pulling together things you can start incorporating in your discussion. You don't do it like that's the that's the answer. You bring it as a list of things of failures, omissions, or actions that turn on interfering with rights that are objective, not what you think you have, but what's been been recognized. And that that should just tell you you live in an occupied territory because you don't you can't rely on what you think. And you don't have really the the force and the power to do it other than to convince the one that it wants to oppress you not to buy into that propaganda they've been sold. Otherwise, you're going to have to deal with it. And my thought is if that's going to happen, if that's the inevitable part, why don't you make your record to set it up? We expose the lie. Here's one. It's a proof, folks. All right, so appeals court refuses to grant immunity to a sheriff who engaged in extortion to go after a whistleblower. I'll stop right there. What have I said? The soldiers can only go so far. Once it breaches a certain thing and you start taking uh, stock in those things, you start putting those in the list of op offenses against even the system, those are the paths you travel. Those are the things you develop in your record. Extortion. How have I, what have I been talking about for years? When they come under a call of authority to interfere with a right or a property in you, well, excuse me, a property in you, because this coercion is the right to the property. Extortion is the interference under color of authority or the property in you or that you own or the handing to a third party the rights or property to that as it is extortion. It does not pass, folks. It is a crime, and you cannot use it to go after somebody if you're an official. Okay, so I've been telling you about this. I guess these cases are to show you. I'm not whistling Dixie. I mean, the South should rise again in certain instances, certain parameters, but I'm not whistling Dixie back here behind the woodshed. It's only you uh, setting things up in a more proper way. Again, no, I have to keep saying this. Like people think, again, shooting yourself in the foot like a little kid with a gun. There's no, no bullets or shields here uh, that will protect you. It's how you engage this enemy now. It shouldn't have been an enemy. I don't like it. But, but here's, the, here's the guidances. Outside of these things, you're... you're uh, I guess you're whistling Dixie. I, I, I don't know. It's... It's just not going to function. But if you put your, frame your condition, even the lie or an extortion, the lie of omission, folks, you know, Cassio saying that we can rely on hopium when she knows she wants to impose punitive is actionable if you just put it together. So we have, and I keep talking about the fact that there's uh, soldiers, you know, you, I talked early on, uh, this is all, if you knows them when you see them, leaves were code, we're in a military consequence, go to Title 50, folks, you'll see the imposition of the military all over us, we'd, you go, oh, what have, how many times have I been talking, explained it, the proclamation ending the Civil War never really happened, go read it, you'll see it didn't happen, they claim it happened, they want to get you to buy in, hopium, but it didn't. 
Never had anybody show me how it hasn't. And so one of the major things I follow is this hierarchy of military occupation. And when I told you when I started to look at that and address even that oppression, we became a whole lot more capable. And within the, that oppression, their lawgivers are saying, you can't lie and you can't extort. And I've been saying, you, if they lie and extort, you can move forward actions against them and persist and continue to persist. And the more of us that do that properly, we're going to start to see this change. Here's two things going to happen. Either there's a, I notice I see the Twitter as a, and Gary's been putting a hundredth monkey, be the hundredth monkey. I, I don't want to be a monkey. I just want to be a man. I want to be left alone. I want you all left to be alone to what you do uh, without hurt, harming people. Uh, there's supposed to be an objective basis, but if we want to go to that analogy where we're going to be the next monkey that does something that causes the shift, that can happen. I don't know where that one is. It could be you. It could be next to you, someone next to you. It could be someone you're living with. I don't know. It's certainly not me. I'm over. I'm. I'm I'm digging trenches, building fortifications, assaulting the hill as much as I possibly can. I don't know what else to do. We apparently, I'm not enough. There needs more and more of us. I'm not the hundredth, that's for sure. So there has to be more of us. It could flick overnight. Otherwise, the system that's occupying you will do what the amoeba does. What uh, It's kind of more like a snail when you poke its eye. It retracts the eye. It goes, a snail goes into its shell. It's, that's what it starts to do. It doesn't mean it goes away. It's, it's a concentrated evil rolls underneath the desk. And so you've got to go after it. I mean, it's got to, it doesn't stop there. But here's the guidance that I've been telling you. Lie, and you're a system player, you're done. Uh, no no cause. Uh, I say make a record so you pull that out. Not your opinion, because a lot of people get harmed, harmed in their emotional side of they, they're being lied to. It's quite a different thing to prove it objectively. There's quite a few techniques to do that. That in fact, an analysis of that case should should uh, behoove you uh, to do if you're looking to do that to see how did the woman pull out in a very serious condition. This is a ser I told you the, the only escape I could see unless you're this type of wo woman or usually the women have to do it because they don't go after the men this way quite as nastily that way. They go after men differently. Uh, was uh, if you're not that woman, just get your kids out. If as soon as you get a knock on the door, you hide, you, you don't answer it, the CSD goes away. Child service, state services goes away, their cops go away, and you book it. You get out of the county, you get out of the state if you have to. Because I didn't know of anybody that's capable right off the surprise to be able to do this. This woman got in tangled, like that guy who went before the before the city supervisors and tangled with them and did it the more proper way and got themselves into a place where they are defensible and exposed these very same things I keep telling you about. It works in every aspect still, yet that these things are important. Why I focus on them? I wouldn't talk to you at all, at all, period, if that wasn't the case. And particularly in these in these uh, episodes that we do behind the woodshed, particularly on certain issues, those become the most important. And so I've been uh, dogging a little bit on uh, John Whitehead, just a little bit. I've never met him, never talked to him, don't communicate to many people. In fact, I don't, like I told you, I'm starting to communicate less and less with people. I just don't, um, you know, got lots to get done, and and I don't see a lot of a lot of response in the way, uh, well, I guess I don't like to see, be, watch, uh, the, I don't like to watch car accidents, I guess, you know, the, the destruction of the obvious, and so I guess I got to pull myself back. But anyway, John Whitehead keeps coming on. He falls short of calling it, calling this thing uh, martial law. I want to take state police power. He got a little closer, folks. I just got. I got. Uh, I'm hoping for him, folks. I, I think he's a great guy. Uh, no, I've never met him. He's been on the point. He's just been a little off the point. And so here today, here I want to point out. I've been talking about this Title 50. I've been talking about the military consequence. I was talking. I pointed out to you that. Uh, economic fascism can come through military specters of, of, of imposition. I just, uh, that was a little side part. I pointed out to you this integral in the integrating, integration of all this. Uh, you want to get uh, diver no diversity here, folks? That's you're going to have diversity. The diversity that you have none. Uh, martial law masquerading as law and order. He's, he got the first part of this. I was saying, great, John, you got it. Then he, then he fell back off, but that's okay. We're gonna, I'm going to lean, lean a little bit forward on here. The police state's language of force. And so I want to point this out to, to you. Martial law masquerading as law and order is what I've been saying. He's slow. I told you he's going to come around. 
And uh, I mean, I have nothing. Absolutely, I think you'd be. If I think if we talk, we'd be totally talking the same language. But I want to point out that there's certain ways you talk with people that they get the wrong ideas, and it delays the inevitable. If I see it, I've been saying it's martial law. He now says so. He's been saying state state militarization, and I'm saying no. Get into that. It's martial. It's in military. So he's finally coming up. He's sneaking up on it, folks. I want to give him a, a shout out and thank you, uh, and, and and hold to that. And let's start looking at it that way. Why? It's important because if you go look at the military beyond the militarization, but the military behind the false front that they of many false fronts that they've been put up. You 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 don't you realize you're looking at another projection, isn't it, folks? As I've been talking about, as now we got the right out of the words of the international imposition domestic to us if you will all right so i don't want to read it uh, you can read all this stuff for yourself he's uh, he's been on, he's been there folks real close really close but i think it's a big deal to fall short and say only say only um, and not address the martial consideration because everywhere we look the elements are there and if you don't quite get it you don't understand what it takes to do what attack the soldiers even under their color right even under the color of the authority. In fact, I used the myself. I used the color of the authority as the as the license to go in and get after them. And there's a you don't do it because they're arrogant. You're actually going to get shot at any moment. So you treat it that way. And now you have a different thing, and you become the investigative reporter. Now, investigative reporters, journalists, are under the gun, aren't they? So I should be feeling pretty good right now. I've been telling you to be journalists, I've been, be the investigative reporter. And here we have an, uh, another journalist, folks. And notice to us how this thing plays out and what you can do. Well, ultimately, I can suggest what you start to prepare for. And I say this because the military consequences across your existence, whether or not you see it, whether or not you believe it. Again, you're looking at, when you are, are looking at the false front spaghetti western projection of a military upon you, you're not going to tell the difference. You're sitting in the theater. In fact, you just paid the ticket to get in there. I mean, you're you're invested in the projection. And so here we have another story. U.S. Customs Officer harasses Defense One journalist at Dulles Airport. And the big story here that people make is the 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 uh, the uh, agent was uh, the the uh, U.S. Customs Officer was repeatedly asking the journalist whether or not. He wrote propaganda. And so let me jump into the middle of this story. Well, ultimately, what's the point? He, the, the guy who's supposed to be a journalist, he eventually, for expedience, agreed. He just writes propaganda. So people are picking up the admission, right? That's a truth. Well, it could be a truth, but that's not why I'm focused on it. I'm focused on a couple things. This is what we do. This is how we respond to an oppression, and we give in to it. And we try to get past it. In this case, it actually went a little easier. He did get past it. And he gets a complaint. But I want to point out some things that you miss going in, that if you're looking at doing these things wherever you are, are warning signs that you should have checked before or qualify as you go. Uh, and this is Right in this story, it says that uh, the incident took place at 4 p.m. Thursday at Dull, Dulles International Airport. News editor Ben Watson was returning from an assignment in Denmark. Denmark, uh, where when he entered permanent residence re-entry aisle number 17 at Dulles. After the Customs and Border Protection official asked the usual questions about undeclared fruit or meat, the interaction took an unusual and unsettling turn. Watson recalls, recalls the conversation. The CPB off, uh, CBP officer holding Watson's passport asked, What do you do? Watson says journalism. The officer asks, so you write propaganda, right? Watson says no. CPBP officer asks, you're a journalist? Watson says yes. Officer asks, you write propaganda, right? Watson says no. I'm in, a jur I'm in journalism covering national security and homeland security and with many others of the same skills I use in the U.S. Army as a public affairs officer, some would argue that's propaganda. He asks, are you a, jur you're a journalist? Watson says yes. 
CP, CBP officer writes, asks again, do you write propaganda, right? Watson re waited five seconds and then said, for the purposes of expediting this conversation, yes. The fourth time the officer asked, you write propaganda, right? For the purpose, Watson again responds, for the purpose of expediting this conversation, yes. CBP officer says, here you go. At that point, the CBP officer handed back the passport. Now, we go on to a little discussion, but this is not all my point. Watson goes on to file a civil rights complaint. It's stated in the next paragraph that CBP officer's behavior appeared to violate the spirit and possibly the letter of the DHS's internal directive. It gives a number and a place and a link for you to go to find the ethics and standards of conduct that I've told you to go to. Uh, go read and understand and familiarize yourself so you know what those lines are and you don't make them questions appeared. No, they are. And you will lead your discussion because you're going to be in a hassle. Likely, if you're not going to be able to present something that he mentions, national security, it may not go so good for you. It may go worse like what the other stories that we have. You're going to be around there for a few hours. You're having to start your investigative reporter all over this, this agent really fast. You should have this in ethics and standards codes in your mind. Uh, maybe not photographically memorized, but do you need to know the principles? There's always limitations to where they can go. You want to identify there beyond that. And then you could actually integrate the conversation instead of going through this nonsense where you expedite the question, which brings you into what this guy, this little pipsqueak of an agent wants to have you say, whether or not it's the truth, just for the sake of exp expediting something, folks? You're going to say something that's not true? That wasn't too cool. If you knew the standards, you could put the, the official against that code. Wouldn't that repeated question offend? And isn't it a violation of the provision that says that once you get your answer, that's good enough? And so you set the record of this because his civil rights complaint now comes out where the CPB spokesman, which will not be identified, uh, says that the allegations of the officers alleged, alleged inappropriate conduct at uh, the Dulles Air International Airport uh, is being investigated. Let me go back. I talked about a lot of stuff here. Oh, did you miss it, folks? Where we start to make a mess of this. Well, we don't. We just kind of go through thinking these people are do, doing us a favor. Did you miss it up front where he entered the permanent resident reentry aisle? By the statement of here, he's not a permanent resident, folks. Why would you look at that sign and go in that aisle? Now, if, taking that on the face of it, if that's the case, that he's now walked into the resident, permanent resident, maybe there's a set of questions that don't apply to an American that has freedom of access. Where there's no probable cause, folks. What I've been talking to you about establishing. In other words, when he asked the second time, or, or, or you do propaganda, right? You, you'd say, do you have probable cause to believe that I do? Do you have probable cause to ask the same question the second time after you've been given an answer the first time? That's literally protected in this country, under and, and as well my right to enter. Do you see how the conversation goes a little different? And whether or not I end up sitting in a room for hours, I've already made my record, the guy's in violation, and now we've got him on felony as well, and I'm saying that may be the next statement. Instead of expediting the conversation, the guy's witnessing a criminal, even an ethical standards violator. Because what is he doing? He's taking the color of authority as an extortion of the right of entry where there's no probable cause. Did you hear that any discussion like what I'm telling you right now in this article? No. He's a pretty, pretty poor investigative reporter. He's a pretty poor journalist. They know this is going to happen. So do you. Why don't I see these stories actually starting to address the problem? It's always in the appearance like some ghost of some violation. No, set the violation. You have to know a little bit more nowadays. When they put national security on you, that became your responsibility in an occupied territory. Why? Because even when you go into the militaristic aspect, then you really have to know what you're dealing with, and you have to know their Achilles heels. Then you set the record for them. 
let me offer something that came to mind as I was thinking about this. There's so much, again, I could talk forever, I guess, on these things. Depends on what your interest is, depending on how deep we want to go. But let me just offer something because it becomes important uh, in the dynamic. It could have been taken away and not handed the passport, and then they, they start to confiscate things. Remember, I've suggested, and you put this in your right to enter, but they don't have probable cause, that what they're doing is a color of authority to interfere with your right to be a witness, your right to record the interaction that you have probable cause to believe is a felony crime, not misdemeanors, felony crimes, and then you state them out of your state law. Now, that takes a little bit of study, not a lot. It, these are sentences in the, in the penal code, sentences, folks, that you put in your bag of law, mind, memory, or a piece of paper, and when they start to interfere with you past the point when they do this or when they're interfering with you, when you they don't have a probable cause, you start asserting your right to maintain a witness against what they're doing. And if they don't, if they do take the stuff, it's a felony. Why? Not for st stealing. Now, that's a misdemeanor. No, for interfering with the right that you had in the property and the right you had to witness the crime to maintain it for what? A remedy. Now you go back to your First Amendment to Congress if that's where you want to go without the court, see? So if you start interacting with all this, you have a better word in your mouth. I'm frustrated for this guy. This guy's not a bad guy, Ben Watson. He's just a guy traveling around. I would have thought he would have known better. But he didn't. But we get to look in at this. And I get to say, wait a minute, there's something else we could have done. It, it would have been an answer? Well, I don't know if it's going to be an answer, but it's certainly going to make your record a whole lot different, isn't it? And now, let's apply it. He's a, I'm saying the military is everywhere. You think the police respond any different when they give you the same nonsense? This is a particularized one, but it comes in many forms. You think you this, this, I'm telling you something that is only going to be used at the Dulles airport in front of one guy that goes off the, off the edge? No, this is going to be any potential interaction with any law enforcement or code enforcement that you come across. The potential is there. They're projecting authority. The prediction is they probably won't have it. And so you have to have you speaking to that anticipation. But they won't have it. And how you test that is not being silent. To that, you better remain silent when you're going to convict yourself. But you don't remain silent on the standard they're supposed to apply that they're violating. That you make a record of. So I would say to critique Ben Watson's journalism, it's pretty poor here. He didn't become he didn't become the journalist he claims to be. We all need to be that journalist, I think. But the real one, the one that turns into a pit bull, literal literal to the record making and getting the story. You whip out your little derby and you stick your little press card out in it and then you pull out your whip out your your little notepad and a pencil, and you stick your tongue on the end of that lead because you like the graphene out of it, and then you start writing your notes about what's going on, uh, also turning on your phone and saying, don't take that because it'll be a felony against you. I'll charge you. And if you don't give me your name, that's, a, that's obstructing justice. I'll get you for that, too, in the pursuit of a felony. How's that, folks? You have a better word in your mouth? You're not in your opinion. You go to your state law. They'll try to transfer it out of the federal. You go ahead and let it and then charge it against the uh, property and go to the claims court with it. They won't let you. The point is you're making a mess out of the whole thing, and you're pressing this point that they should never be messing with Americans this way, ever. It's beyond their ethics standards, folks. Talk about low-hanging fruit, and then they don't want to talk about it. It's because we're silent against it. Well, he's going to do his civil rights. Was he in civil rights, folks? Was he a freed man? I don't think so. But that's who he's going to sue through there. I guess they can presume to be a freed man if they did something against their own policy. That's a violation, isn't it? Whether or not it rises to the level of a civil rights suit, I don't know. That'll be determined by what? The Bar Association's judge that supports this whole thing. What whole thing? The militarization of your life, folks. He's part of the false front, and if this is really the military capacity, capacity I'm saying, I'm thinking, he's a victim to it in one regard as well, as he can only do what he's told at some level. No, notwithstanding the pro projection, the promotion that they're independent. Well, that's the biggest. Uh, when I realized what they were telling me there, that was a talk about a, a mind blow break. You buy you buy into this independence. How can possibly independent of the system? How can it possibly actually be objective? 
And then you start realizing, oh, this is a setup. And, okay, what are we going to do with it? Nothing or something. We're going to do the wrong thing and get ourselves in more trouble, or we're going to start learning the better thing to do and make trouble. And just like I said, the best thing I could come up with at this point is be develop yourself to be the porcupine. You don't do the porcupine by by not ad addressing this when they come after you in some form or fashion. And this comes in many, many ways. So I, I don't know where, what will trigger you to to do what, what the next thing is. So, again, a U.S. custom official harasses a defense one journalist. He wasn't a very good journalist. He could have developed more than to concede something he probably doesn't do or doesn't think he does. Whether or not he does propaganda, I don't know. I guess propaganda is a neutral word, too. So I guess you could say that. But certainly this this officer had it in for him. And so, improper. And imp improfessional, even if on the commercial side. And that's what the ethics is about. But you step farther. You go into the rights. And you set that up not agreeing. You set it up in the imp continued imposition as a violation. Chicago impounded this grandmother's car for a pot offense she didn't commit. Now she owes $6,000. What I want to point out on this story, you get the link. I don't want to go through the story. Uh, it's a lady who wasn't even in the state, had her grand granddaughter uh, take the kid, uh, take the car to some other place into Chicago, uh, had the boyfriend uh, driving the car. The kid didn't listen to her grandmother. The boyfriend was driving the car. Cops stopped him. They found some pot, impounded the car in Chicago, apparently. Is it Chicago? Yeah, Chicago a, has a vehicle impound racket going on. Any of you up there probably know all about this to the tune of... Tens of millions, $44 million a year, I think they were talking about, theft. A woman, not even in, the, not even in her car, not, has the, her property taken. And when I look at this, I look at this case, and I want you to look at something for yourself. Look and see how she's dealing with it on their terms and not doing a collateral attack on her terms. And I'll suggest that the failure to do that allows them to continue kicking the can down the road and keep the threat. And if everybody, the thousands and thousands of people that had this happen, and in particular where the, the Supreme Court said that the, the value beyond the, the, the actual harm cannot be, is theft essentially, is the extortion, is the, is, is the felony, and you, go, you put, present that case against this, if thousands and thousands of people would do it instead of silently agreeing pretending you don't have an action, pretending their due process is the only thing, if there is due process is another question. I'm saying, here's an example of how you don't do it correctly, and they keep taking advantage. That I think a collateral attack, an equity, even in equity, you don't even go for the money at this point. You're going for the principal and the principal violation. There's equitable compensation you can get, but that's not what your focus is. You're trying to fix a wrong inside the system is your goal. And this case, if you look within the writing, just within the writing says, this is a condition that doesn't, is not consistent with the law. It's, in my mind, slam dunk, that the people that are not going collateral attack, the attorneys are allowing to help foster and encourage this thing. That people, we the people, have to step up and stop. Again, object uh, lesson here, I think they tell us enough to see there's other things they want to do, and they're entering into a class action. Why? Go into your rights. Your property rights are not dependent on a class. Your rights are, are based on your what you claim. Why would you go to class action and have a, another a, an attorney do a lawsuit that's going to give you some pittance? When you have a thousand of these cases go in, and the, and the city now, all the city taxpayers have to start paying for this nonsense. You think that when you don't do that, that going to class action, they, they whittle it down to nothing? That's going to teach anybody? Class action is for the harm, right? The money. But no, you do it for the principle. And in that, when you go look at the ec actions and equity now, there is much more ability to teach the, uh, the offender to stop doing it through attachments of their own budget. And if they're not a sovereign, which a city is not, then you can attach the uh, the treasury for their violations. And so why aren't we moving this forward a little better? It's, again, astounding to me. I've also told you that you have to get involved uh, in this day 
to stop the militarization, the federal militarization of the local police. Now, there's been a shift from police, a shift to police from peace officers <laughs> is one problem, and then a federalization of them, which in my mind is really not so much a federalization, the, the false front would suggest so, but the false front also defines that it's not federalization, it's just that you're now starting to see it, they're making it obvious. But the Oakland activists are pushing efforts to block federalization of local police. And I said, this is going to be a thing you have to do, and the people in Oakland who have suffered greatly underneath this thing are moving forward, uh, and I think in a way they have to. Well, I don't know, and I don't read here, I didn't read too much to see if they're rioting in the streets over it or not. That won't be the way you do that. Okay, so you move forward. You're going to have to take this stuff in your own hands. Uh, the federalization is a different problem than the local brutality that's already there. And so that has to be adjusted. But at least you start moving into the right, the, the right, more right path of how you accomplish something. You focus, you focus your attention on things narrow. That's why I, I, it's hard to kind of speak about the global thing, even though I can see the fractals of it everywhere. And that's partly how I got back to local. You can't solve some things, certainly bought by yourself sometimes. You may be the overachiever. Go for it if you are. But I haven't found too many of them, if any, actually. And so I kind of have to, I'm talking to you within even my own limitation. There's just a place that uh, doesn't work beyond my sphere of abilities. And until I get some people around that can help, uh, those things are going to be outside of my grasp, and I can spend a lot of time and, and, and try to do find ways around, or uh, which I partly do sometimes, but or else I say, okay, I'm going to need to bring more a different angle on this to get more help to come eventually. And that's just a strategy thing. But uh, people are uh, activists are pushing efforts to block federal militarization. Why? Why is that even in a consideration? Tells you that your local jurisdictions are looking for something in the future that they think they need against you is not a government for you. It's a government against you. And so self-evident proof, truths, so you have to act against it. It's the only way that thing that I can see will right now. And anybody who has a different tact, I need to hear about it because I don't know why I'm locked into my own, my own prejudice at that point. And so I don't, and so on the other hand, I don't put up with a bunch of nonsense because of what we do, we do. We get things done better than I've seen way, anything I've done before or seen before or any number of other people's trying. But it's not the world. It doesn't fix the world. It fixes parts that are broke. It corrects things. And those aren't guaranteed either. Oh, it's all hopium in the future. See, that's that's what's ruling. Women pushed the emergency button on police robot, and uh, it told her to step out the way. And so here we have the military consequence in the police. They can put these robots out here, and you go for help. You think this all this is your security? They don't care about your security. The robot uh, said an emergency button pushed on a robot will return to you. Get out of its way. And what it wants to do is go down the trail later on and tell people to uh, get off the grass or whatever. And so these, this evidence that the military state, however, uh, however uh, costumed, even in the form of a robot, it's not here to help you. So much for AI. So much for your security. And harm got happened here. And uh, I don't know what to say. And so, you know, the place is being wired different, and no one's responding is, I guess, my main problem. And I was uh, had a bunch of tabs on before. I don't even know where they're at anymore. Uh, talking about this conglomeration, this coagulation, this blood clot that they're developing regarding these, these uh, robotic uh, sensors. They're just there to track you all. They're not there to help you. Come on. And so why are you spending the money as people? Why are your, uh, the leverage funding comes from property tax owners, folks. I don't care if you're a city, a county, or whatever. And it comes from other places as well. But that's, I mean, how far do you want to go? You're being ripped off, and you agree to it. For as much as you'll complain, you're, be, you're agreeing to it. And so this military state has capacity, capabilities. Researchers, new methods enable identifying a person through walls, from candidate video footage using only Wi-Fi. We talked a little bit about this. This is an amplification on that story. It's getting even better for them to see. So where they're going to tell you to get out the way, they're going to have these robots, maybe two of them go by your walls and be scanning through Wi-Fi how, who the people are inside as far as how they move, what they call their gate. 
and they can take all this Wi-Fi information, 5G implement implemented, through companies that you, third parties and countries that are implementing all this software to do all this, with all the back doors they've got in it, to be always interrogating you, doing one of the SMART things that's gathering information to find out who they think, who they think, project, who they think it is for law enforcement. Another militarizing weapon as they move it into 5G. Right? So you, you keep talking that you can't do much or you just yak about it. The army, is mo the military, whatever you see, is moving forward to bring the future they want. If I focused on the UN, I'd miss the military occupation. If I focused on the Russians, I'd miss the occupation of military occupation in the United States. If I fo focused on uh, 5G, I'd miss the whole process about how they implement every other thing that they're defeating uh, our our lifestyles in. And so, a long time ago, as I saw it, as I could see it, we focused in on where the point is, and then I speak to you from there. And I speak to you on engage, how you engage for you. Because each one of us has to really pull this out. But they've got technology. They use Wi-Fi. I told you, it's fascinating, folks. The technology is fascinating stuff. But they're utilizing it in a capacity that projects. And this is where we have the problem, the disconnect. They make stuff up. Chinese Internet users must pass a facial recognition test to use the web. Just one aspect of how they're bringing the social credit interaction of the big web of things, how they're going to bring on, if you will, the cashless society, how this thing is tracked and traced is exactly what SMART has to do in order to keep control, and they're incrementally bringing it on everywhere, and you're letting it. doesn't matter where you be. They're going to be checking out how you walk. They'll be able to put that in a database and... and extrapolate whether or not that's you behind the wall when they come in and execute you. Because they made that up too, right? We hear it all the time. This is not, I don't, you know, I, I would have thought this is fantasy, but it's not, folks. It's happening. It's, I've been telling you about it. The databases are being built. You're not interfering with all that. You're agreeing to be part of these databases. You don't attack them when you have the chance. And when you do, some of you did it wrong. You got beat up, like I have in the past. And you don't. We have to learn better. We just got to keep those of us that see that we can. We have actually better feet to move faster. We don't get go and put ourselves there. Massive 30 state real time ALPR database is revealed, folks. And then it goes to 14 billion people around the globe. You think this is just local? A police license plate database? No, this is integrated through third party big data. And they've got databases behind all that that are being controlled and traced and used by certain people. In fact, the Israelis are part of this. The military uh, principal architect and Israeli military cyber defense force and it says Israel can play a key role in the creation of operational alliance similar to that of NATO, but on a global scope. These people are players right in on it, folks. I've been talking to you about it. I've been telling you this is how this thing moves. Well, you just do your keyboard complaints. There's some real stuff going on. And uh, the climate change is just the surface thing of it. Uh, the uh, eat babies, it was perfect to expose that thing but it's attached to a much bigger play going on, a much bigger projection that we can sit quietly and be afraid in, in whatever movie we've gone in or, the, or be in the dramatic or whatever we're doing. We can sit there in that seat in that theater while they project the future on us that will come about because we were in the theater being wowed at Reds and Circuses. Thank you, Gimner, for what you do at reallibertymedia.com. Appreciate what you do there to keep us going and everything going on to keep us going and all the people that donate over time appreciate that jewels over at ucy.tv thank you for all that and sound minds thank you for what you've been doing all the folks over there thank you for the support and uh, and keeping together and working it out and through i'll be with you next week tech diffs or nature will Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose.
Well, that's what opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. <laughs>